In the geometry step, we will define the domain over which we want to solve our governing equations. And the domain, as we saw, is the volume defined by our hollow cylindrical shaft. And, and a schematic of that is shown over here. Let's start ANSYS and then draw, the, uh, draw this volume in ANSYS. So I will go into the search area and type in workbench and that shows me ANSYS workbench. I have 19.1 and 19.2 on this machine. I'll use workbench 19.2 since it's about the latest version. And that starts up ANSYS workbench. And once the workbench window comes up, you can go to under analysis systems, drag static structural into the project page, or you could double click on static structural. And in the process, we are giving it an important clue about the governing equations we want to solve. Um, we want to solve the governing equations of static structural. We'll get to that a little bit later. And I'll call this, uh, particular project hollow cylindrical shaft and um, right click on geometry and say new space claim geometry and you should see starting space claim over here and it'll take a few seconds to start up once space claim comes up um, go under File, Space Claim Options, and over here, go to Units, and then under Units, Length, set it to meters rather than millimeters. Um, that would be appropriate for our dimensions. And if I scroll down, I will set my minimum minor grid spacing to be 0.1. Again, that uh, matches the dimensions of our shaft better and say OK. And let's draw the two concentric circles on the left end first. So I will select a sketch plane using this, select new sketch plane. And then if I go to the upper right, if I move the cursor to the upper right, it will select the XY plane. And so we'll draw, draw our sketch on the XY plane and extrude it in Z. And I'll say look at plane or plan view. And so you should be looking at the XY plane. And draw a circle. So under the sketch tools, select circle. And hover near the center. Uh, and let me zoom in a little bit using the middle mouse wheel and hover around the center and you should see snapping to curve center here. So once you see snapping to curve center on the upper left of the palette, draw, start drawing a circle and then hit the space bar. And the outer diameter that we are given is 0.7. Enter that and hit enter. Okay, and I can zoom in again using the middle mouse wheel and I can translate by holding down the control key and using the middle mouse button, okay? And you can also manipulate the view over here. Um, let's draw a second, the inner circle. So again, I'm, I'm select, the circle is selected and make sure you're getting snapping to curve center there. And so I'll start drawing my second circle and I hit the space bar and the, um, the diameter of that inner circle is 0.4. Okay, and then if I go and I click escape to get out of sketch, uh, the, the, the sketching um, tool, and let me go into the 3D mode. And you see it's converted our curves into surfaces. And we have one surface with two parts, outer and inner. We want only the outer part. So I'll highlight the inner part and hit delete, the delete key. Okay. 
So now I need to extrude that and I can change the view like this. I'll extrude it in the Z direction. So using the, the middle mouse button, I can rotate it and then extrusion, it's called pull. So you just, you're going to pull it in the Z direction. Highlight, and when you come to the surface, it highlights a natural pull direction uh, in the yellow arrows. And over here, you'll see a yellow arrow. And the natural pull direction is what we want. You can change it, but here we don't need to. So I'll hold down the, the middle or the left mouse button, hit the space bar, and enter our length, which is 4.2 meters. And I will translate it. Um, and to see that we have the right thickness, uh, what I can do is I can go to the measure tab, say measure, and select the inner circle. It tells me what the diameter is. Hold down the control key and select the outer circle. And you see the distance is 0.15, which is the, um, the thickness we want. So it looks right, so I'll hit escape. And I will, so we have the domain over which we want to solve our governing equations. So I'll exit space claim. And I'll say file, save, go to my working directory. And I can give it, give it an appropriate, the project an appropriate name. I'll say torsion and hit enter. Now if I go to my working directory, I will see that I not only have a file, I have a folder and then I have a backup of that folder which will go away when I exit um, ANSYS. So to save this project, you need not only this file, but you also need that associated folder. And I've seen students forgetting to save that that folder. They just have this file and you lose your work and no amount of uh, screaming at the computer kind of brings that folder back. So make sure if you save it to Google Drive or to a USB drive, you save that as well as that. There are also other ways you can save it in WBPC format, which I won't talk about over here.